tonight we will talk about Temple. So this is something um, which I'm mildly enthusiastic about this year because I think it improved my thinking about fencing and by this also the fencing itself. Um, I'm mainly using the Italian terminology, if you will, from, from early Renaissance times, 16th century at least, thinking about Tempi. Um, you have traces of that in the German Lissenau tradition uh, as well, I'm convinced. And this is, by the way, also something that is still relevant for Olympic sports fencing, which I also do, and which just, let's say, dawned upon me this year as well, even though I should have known it like 12 years ago or so. And, um, the basic idea is that every time you do something in fencing, every time you have a fencing action, it takes up a certain amount of time at tempo. So this is what, what, what uh, tempo means. And um, this goes back to Aristotelian logic, I was told. So you say time is everything between two moments of stillness. And we actually can use it in fencing. You say, okay, we're standing here, nothing happens, oh, and then we have an idea. Okay, now we have no idea again. So, but this is a tempo, everything has happened in between. And so, why is that important to, to talk about or just to, to conceptualize in, in your mind? Um, it is, in my opinion, because every time you really commit to an action, you actually say, I'm doing this kind of thing, I'm doing a full bite, I'm doing a thrust, I'm doing a cut. And there is a point where you cannot go back, where you cannot really. You just say, okay, I'm doing this, and for a split second, you're unable to move. And this makes it relatively interesting um, for your opponent because you can counter that. So as soon as someone's committed to an action, you can say, okay, I'm doing a counter because you cannot um, react to it anyway. So what can that be, for instance? Um, if uh, Simon and I, for instance, go in from uh, second world in Schützen, we could say, okay, now we're both trying to, let's say, uh, move the opponent's blade aside. By means of geometry, maybe even by sense of pushing, let's assume that Simon is trying to push my blade away. To the sides. So this is an action. We have bind first, and then he's trying to push it. And that means in the process of pushing, he's starting a tempo, he's committing to a certain direction, even a sort of, let's say, level of power that he's generating. And I can use that. And what I try to, what I'd like, really like to do in this moment is the, the Durchtreten technique, according to uh, MS-133. And in very slow mode, it looks like this. We have this here, moment of stillness. Now he tries to push, so he is opening a tempo. And shortly after that, I feel that, releasing the blade, and he is basically continuing his tempo here. Because so he has committed to this action, he goes there, and I can go here, but would take him and hit him. So this is important uh, to know. So if someone commits to an action, there must be a way of going into the action, let's say shortly after he started. This is, by the way, where in the German Lissenau tradition I uh, would place the in des, which means like in the middle. But it's the same thing. He's in the middle of something, it has just begun, and I'm doing it. Another option would be, let's say, I'm trying to thrust you from six ward, and when I'm really trying to reach you, you do an overbite. So, very simple. Go in here. So, you could say, that is my moment of stillness. And now I think I'm, I really want to hit him. I commit to this action, and he has me. And then he can follow up. In this instance, he doesn't immediately hit me, but he can displace my blade and prepare something else. So, and this is an important thing because, um, meaning, it seems very obvious, and in technical training, it, it happens. But for instance, it can happen in free play that you. Um, you have a similar situation coming from six, and he's so much overbinding you. Uh, so, and you end up here. Okay, trying to find out what, what happens. And if you know about tempo, you knew that you would have had to react much earlier. So, because the tempo where I'm reacting to this overbind, for instance, is here. In the moment where he's initiating his action, where he's committing to it, and you see it goes all the way to the side, I have time to overtake it. So, every time you find yourself in a situation where you say, okay, how did you come to this? So the point of the bind is somewhere outside, I'm not even sure what I'm supposed to do. Um, this is probably where I took a wrong turn, like reactions earlier. So, the one thing you can do in your free play, if you, so let's say, have the mental capacity, 
try to see where my opponent is starting tempo. Uh, tempo sorry. Um, so we do something, he starts doing something, and try to see when that happens, or try to feel when it happens, usually when it comes to comes. So if I'm doing a thrust and he's doing an overbind, I will try to do Mutatio Gladii, which is like also basic regular technique. We're just trying to demonstrate that. Something like this. So what happened now in terms of tempi, if we do it again very slowly, so I'm having a tempo here, but very carefully it's just here. He's doing overbind, I know he is committing to an action, that's where I go wrong. So if he is careful enough, and we will come to that in a minute, in the moment I'm going around, he can go around too. In the sense that I'm starting a tempo here, he can uh, start a tempo again and thrust him. So, what we've learned now, the interesting thing about the tempo is when it begins, because shortly afterwards you can counter it. Um, the other thing is, what do I do so my own actions are not countered that easily? So, how do I prevent the opponent from countering me uh, right after uh, opening um, an fencing action? And so this is actually where we can get back to, to George Silver, for instance. I, I haven't read him in a long time, but I believe now uh, what he means with his true times and false times, which I mean, uh, I believe many of you have heard before. So, anyone have an idea what true times and false times mean in George Silver? Just a quick summary. Yeah? Let's create safety with your weapon and move your body afterwards. Okay, so, so you're safe and then you move your body. Yes. Okay. So that means we have to move arm, or with, with, I think it's hand, hand, hand body, foot, or, or two feet actually. Yeah. And me, for, the, for quite some time I thought, yeah, this basically means I, mean, I have to bring weapon forward to have safety, and um, maybe also because this is not so easily visible, and then you um, follow the foot. Um, now that if it's slightly different, the thing is, <laughs> If I don't want to um, be counter, for instance, with this thrust, so my, my idea is to bring this thrust here, hit him. So as we have seen, he can just overbind me and um, destroy everything. So how do I keep, um, how do I keep myself aware of what can happen? How do I keep myself flexible, let's say, mentally <laughs> and also in my body, so I can react to his overbind? And this is actually by slowly, uh, starting slowly working myself into the opponent. So, my tempo might start here, but I'm still, every time I'm going forward, I'm able to react. I'm able to do something. So, I'm planning, if you will, my tempo carefully. I know it starts here, and if he does nothing, the other one. Yeah, okay, I just push my thrust forward. So, you may take a step, so that's a full tempo. But, if, if I do it, uh, uh, if, if he um, overbinds me, I can say, oh, no problem, I can react with my blade. Because I've just started it, I'm in a very um, initial stage of, of, of doing my tempo. So, um, I can react. He can go into my tempo, but I can react to that. What's not, uh, what does not work is starting with the foot, for instance. But I'm saying here, okay, I want to go there. So, that did not only not work because I was, let's say, not um, protecting myself with the blade, for instance. Uh, it, uh, it did not work because at the beginning of my tempo, I was already doing something I cannot really stop. And a step, taking a step, is one of the things where I really, I, you need to be really good to, while taking a step, redirect your blade because you felt something in between. So taking a step is the one thing where you can say, okay, if I counter in that moment, there's a pretty high chance of success. So, he is waiting for my tempo. And if my tempo is designed to, let's say, be wrongly constructed or false, if I do it in a false time, he can get me without a problem. So, th this is the other thing. So, this is, I think, um, the two very, or the two most important aspects when I'm working with this idea of fencing theory. Every time you do something, it takes up time, and you commit to something. 
And you want to be able to know when your opponent commits to something so you can counter him. But you also want your own template to be invisible, as it were. So he doesn't know when to do a counter. So, and um, there's, for instance, one thing where you say that the Durchtreten uh, Technik against the right over by the company, we talked about this earlier. Um, can you pick that up, please? Um, this is one, I think, uh, at the current state of affairs of our interpretation, this is one thing where tempo is really crucial. So if um, Simon overbinds me, and I kind of do a mutatsu, for instance, I could do a Durchtreten, but this is a really a tempo issue. So what it means is, coming here, I got it, I need to do it here. But this action something only works if I get his tempo. So if Simon's taking a step now, I have a good chance of, of delivering this voice uh, and the short sound. So, but, if Simon is careful, he's overbinding, following me. He's doing very little steps. So, so he has very short tempo. He can always react. He can uh, instantly counter my voice trade, which looks somewhat like this. So now, Simon is very careful. He's carefully planning his voice trade. And this means, I'm the one who's starting a tempo and he can react. That is the thing. So, keep in mind, um, I know this is probably very, and not only theoretically, it's probably a bit hard to guess if you haven't felt it. So, uh, uh, if you want to uh, discuss this further, you can always ask me. But, um, in simple terms, it's if you start an action, try to not start it with your whole body first, but build your tempo, your time, truly, <laughs> as it were. Uh, build it carefully. You're threatening, you're threatening, if it actually works, then you can do that. Because probably at this point where you're supposed to take a step, you're safe <coughs> from mechanically, for instance. And if you want to counter your opponent, try to figure out when the point is where it's actually only going to react. And this means, if you're adhering to that, you won't get stuck in a situation where the bind is somewhat out, outside, and you have no idea what you're doing every time. So then at some point both initiate a tempo um, and you have a double hit or something uh, because you know, okay, I only move if my opponent um, moves. So, to sum up also read it up, uh, what helped me most was um, the introduction of the Capo Ferro uh, Radio Treatise from 1610. And uh, this is something that is still prevalent in sports fencing. And my sports fencing coach is actually teaching me the same things. Especially, in, 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 I believe you're all aware that sports fencing is usually clearly faster than what we do here. So, but even then, what I'm supposed to do is carefully building up my attack. I'm not like <laughs> going like this. Because, it's, especially in sports sensing, everyone is wired, everyone is trained to exploit tempos. That's why I always have to double hits, not just because someone is faster, but because they hit the other one in this moment, and the counter hit still falls, but uh, the tempo was right. So even though they have it, and uh, it might improve your fencing a lot because I can, I believe you can explain every hit or even double hit with uh, someone not adhering to this tempo principle. Okay, I hope this made it somewhat clear. Do you have any questions? <coughs> yeah, please. When you're hesitating, when you're doing this very slowly, you're never really committing to <coughs> action. When you hesitate, you're not committing to action. You, well, I understand you kind of. Okay, going carefully into the situation, yeah. you're not really committed for that plan, for that action you're, you're planning, you're about to do. Um, the thing is, Step what, I, yeah, what, what I mean is, let's say, you, um, you approach carefully. You approach in, in a way that, um, that the moment where you commit, where you cannot get out of it, happens at a point where he cannot uh, come to you anyway because you have cleared the path with your sword, for instance. So, it means that I'm hesitating when I'm doing a thrust um, slowly like this. It just means like I'm uh, trying to be aware of everything. And if he doesn't do anything, or he's not doing it too, too, uh, too late, then I'm completing the action. So, and if you do that, it still is more or less seamlessly. So we can do that in, let's say, more fluid speed. You're not reacting, or you're reacting a bit too late, but I'm trying to do this exact thrust but I try to make it in a way that I'm not committing too early. So it might look like this. So, you've seen that was a slide. <coughs> um, 
slight delay shortly after the submission of the bind, and then I push it home. I think if I train this properly, I can do it even more. But at the same time, I'm always prepared to do a counter because I've trained it in that way. So it might look fast from uh, the outside later, but it's always an approach of working myself into the opponent slightly. And this is, I think, what. Um, Okay. It's political, but if it's on YouTube, it's fine. I can just take it like. I mean, well, what's what's <laughs> lacking in, in uh, most uh, free class even tournament fights that we have? That people are not so much working themselves into the opponent; they're trying to hit immediately. So, but I think it's always good to pose a threat and then work yourself go for the next opening. And always in this, let's say, careful approach where you uh, get closer, but you're not immediately committing to the complete action right away. Any other questions? Okay, if you want to um, try that out or have any other questions, um, feel free to ask me, and otherwise, I'll thank you for your attention.